Hi, my name is Brian Tanis, and I'm a developer advocate at Red Hat, and I focus on OpenShift. So first off, what is serverless? It's based on Knative. Uh, it's easy to install via an operator, and I could deploy applications as a developer without needing to know Kubernetes YAML. It also allows us to scale by default with good, uh, good defaults configured. Uh, we could scale down to zero um, to use some of our resources more effectively. And serverless also enables event-driven application architecture. So we could have our application um, be triggered by an event that comes in uh, via Kafka or an event bus uh, or something that we build, maybe even Camel K, for example. So there are three different ways to deploy applications using Knative Serving. And I wanna show the differences between a deployment and a K service. So we could see that we have some configuration. We've got a name. We have to specify some selectors and some labels. Um, and we have to specify an image with some ports and some services as well as routes. You could see that that is our manifest to deploy this application using a traditional style deployment. So, if we translate that into a Knative service, you could see there's a whole lot less YAML that we have to manage. So we could apply our application using OC apply and we could apply that deployment. Uh, we could also deploy the K service if we need to as well. So looking at the OpenShift developer console, we could see the two different deployments that we just used to deploy our app, the event display deployment, as well as the K service. So we could click on add and we could choose either from Git. So we could import source code from GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket, for example. Uh, we could use container images, which is what we're gonna use, or we could maybe even do a Docker file or something else. So to deploy the image, we need to specify which image to use. And we could see that's been validated. Uh, next, we could choose to deploy this using a standard Kubernetes style deployment or a Knative service. So we could specify the minimum number of pods. Uh, we could also maybe specify concurrency targets and limits so that we could uh, scale up our application a little bit more quickly. The last way to deploy an application using Knative would be using the KNCLI. Uh, this also is a no YAML method. We just use switches to configure things, and it's pretty easy to work with. We could update and create things and work with all the Knative uh, tools. We can deploy the K service using the KN CLI tool really easily. So there are three different ways to tie an event source to a Knative service or a sync. One would be a simple direct connection. Another method would be using a channel in a subscription where a channel could have multiple sources uh, and Knative services will subscribe to channels so thirdly, we could use brokers and triggers to use the power of the event queue to filter notifications and events before they touch our Knative service. Within the OpenShift developer console, we could easily create an event source by dragging the arrow outside of the Knative service and choosing event source. And we could specify a Kafka source, but this could also be a camel K source or something that we created uh, or anything else. Uh, that passes events. And in here, we specify our source uh, for Kafka, as well as the topic uh, and the group that we have. Um, and there we go. With this, uh, you'll see the Knative service is going to start ramping up because this uh, event source already has quite a few events um, already flowing into it. So it's a busy event queue. We could see what's happening by clicking on one of the logs here, and we could see that there are cloud events coming in. Uh, we could see different data, uh, and it's just an integer that's incrementing uh, maybe a couple times each second. So with this, we've deployed an application using OpenShift Serverless, and we could see how easy it is to deploy that app and tie a Kafka event source to that application so that we could have an application that's built on event-driven application architecture.
If you're interested in trying out OpenShift, you could go to openshift.com slash try. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about OpenShift, check out learn.openshift.com. And lastly, if you're interested in learning more about Knative and OpenShift serverless, check out the Knative cookbook. It's available for free.